ABC 7 News, as you know, is committed to building a better Bay Area. And one topic we're concentrating on is the climate and the environment. With the current focus on climate change and its effects, the issue of urban greening is taking on a new priority. And now a new study by researchers here in the Bay Area is suggesting that differences in the urban landscape may affect health issues, including COVID-19. Drive through almost any part of the Bay Area and you'll eventually pass from tree-lined streets to grittier, cement-heavy neighborhoods with far less tree canopy. A so-called green divide that's often visible in lower-income areas with a higher percentage of people of color. But now, a new study is suggesting the consequences could also be an actual health risk. So we wanted to ask our communities that have least gr the, the least greenness, uh, the same communities that have higher rates of COVID in them. Erica Spotswood is a lead scientist with the San Francisco Estuary Institute. Along with colleague Rob McDonald of the Nature Conservancy, she compared data from 17 states that track COVID infections by zip code. They found that neighborhoods with predominantly people of color had both less access to green space and higher infection rates. To better understand the link, the team then adjusted the numbers to account for variables like race, income, and population density. They found that even a modest increase of greening correlated with a 4% lower COVID rate in statistical models. So that's like saying um, two neighborhoods that are sort of equal in every other way except for the difference in greenness, um, the ones with more green had less COVID. Researchers have theorized that the availability of green space might lead people to separate more or perhaps contribute to healthier populations in general. Whatever the driver, they believe the difference can now be viewed as both a health and social justice issue. It can be easy to spot the difference in tree cover as you pass through various neighborhoods, but it can be harder to spot the invisible borders that explain the reason for it. For that, you have to drive back in time. They're absolutely is a history of redlining and blockbusting in this area and that occurred you know during the same time period as a lot of these these big infrastructure projects were being put in place uriel hernandez is an urban forester he's worked to increase tree density in areas like east palo alto and other cities where banks may have historically been hesitant to write single family mortgages or where local governments were strapped for cash it's an effort that's taken broad initiatives not doing it piecemeal. Doing it piecemeal is really how we got into this situation with all these neighborhoods being so distinct and different and things kind of being being overlooked. And back at the San Francisco Estuary Institute, researchers are hoping that framing the Green Divide as a significant health issue will help convince cities and counties to devote more resources to repairing it. You know, maybe people don't care as much about the birds that can be supported by the trees outside your house, but if you know how how closely connected those trees are to your human health, you may be more incentivized to, do, to, to take action. And perhaps help right a historical wrong in the midst of a historic pandemic. Now, one note here, the study focused on states that track COVID cases by zip code rather than larger areas like counties. That's to give researchers a more diverse and detailed picture of what's really going on.